Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install a virtual wireless LAN controller in an ESXi environment. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to need is to go to the Cisco website and download the OVA file. In this case, I'm downloading uh, 8.3.102 and I'm downloading the large format. You may only be allowed to download the evaluation format, but this is the one that I have here. So what you're going to do next is you're going to go to File, Deploy OVF, and you're going to select the file here. Next. Next. And since I already have one, I'm going to go ahead and install or call this, this one differently, um, 8.3-2. I'm going to do thin provisioning here. Uh, the first one here, as you'll see in the description, needs to be a service port. So I have a service interface and I also have a secondary interface that's going to be a trunk port. So this is going to be the date where all the data comes in through. So finish. So the OVF is going to start to deploy. In the meantime, what I'm going to go ahead and show you is where we're at here on the configuration of the network. If you hit the server, go to configuration and networking. Um, I have one vSwitch here for management and that's coming out one of the network ports. Uh, this is just pretty much for me to have access to ESXi. Uh, the other one is vSwitch 2 that's coming out of NIC1 out of the server. And here's where all I have, where I have all of the good stuff. I have my data VLAN, I have my service interface, which is where I assigned wireless line controller 2. And then I have a trunk interface where I have wireless line controller 2 as well. If I look under properties, I can show you here the pretty much the, the settings here. Uh, server interface, it's a pretty simple, you know, no VLAN ID or anything like that. Uh, that's pretty much all that is. If you go under trunk, you edit that. The only difference here is that I labeled this as trunk and the VLAN ID is all, obviously because it's a trunk. In order to add this, you simply go to add and you move forward through the configuration like this. So if you were going to add a trunk, you would call that trunk and then call all, right? If it was going to be service, uh, service interface, you would call it service interface, and this would be none. And you just go through that process. So now the deployment has just finished. I'm going to close it, and you're going to notice the VM here. So before I turn it on, I want to make sure that the settings are, are correct here. So I'm going to open up the settings for that VM, and I have 8 gigs of memory. And in my case, that's that's fine. I have enough memory on my machine. Um, I'm using two virtual sockets and one physical core, so two uh, cores in total. Uh, everything else looks good. It has the service interface here, a network adapter one, and trunk. So that's all good here. So pretty much what we can do is we can close that up, and we can hit power on. Then I'm going to hit open console. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and wait for it to do its thing here. So it's going to go through a reboot here. Then it's going to ask you to press any key. I'm just going to go and hit the enter key. And it's going to do another uh, boot process here. During uh, the, the time that I paused there, the virtual machine itself rebooted. Didn't take too long for this to come up at all. So just be patient and we should almost be there. Alright, perfect. So, so it's asking here if you want to terminate the auto install. I'm just going to type yes. And what it's asking now is for the system name. I'm going to call this one WLC 83 because we're running 8.3 and dash 2 because this is a second controller. I'll type admin for the administrative username. 
type in a password, confirm the password. Now it's asking for the IP address for the service interface. Now uh, I don't actually do any real service interface. Um, I don't really have a use for it. So I usually give it just the bogus address. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, is uh, do static and I'm going to give it that address. And there you go. Now this is what is important to me. I utilize the management interface. So I'm going to give this one um, 10.0.2 and this one's going to be dot four. You can change this up to suit your environment. And this is going to be my default gateway. And the interface here in this case is going to be, or I'm sorry, the VLAN identifier is going to be two. Uh, there's only one port here, so I'm going to hit port one. And the DHCP server for this is going to be dot 10 or 10.10 .10 actually. This is a DHCP server running Windows 2012. Uh, virtual gateway address, IP address, I'm just going to give this 111. I'm going to call this SN Mobility. This is for your mobility group and uh, radio frequency group names. SSID, I'm just going to call this wireless lab uh, bridging mode no thank you allow static IP addresses for now I'm just gonna say yes typically you don't want to do that I'm not gonna configure radius at this point in time I'm in the US and I want to enable B A N G as well as auto RF I'm gonna go ahead and configure the NTP server which is gonna be uh, the default gateway I'm going to set a value here for the polling interval and I'm not going to go through with any IPv6 configurations. So once that's done, all you got to do is hit yes to save and reset and you're going to go through this process here. Once it comes back up, I will go ahead and uh, resume the video. All right, so at this point, the controller is up and running. So what I'm gonna do is go into my, I'm gonna RDP, a remote desktop, into my lab machine. And this particular Windows machine is inside of my lab. And what I use it for is just for controlling um, pretty much the different components of my lab. So here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, a couple things. So let first, let me open up the web browser. And we're going to go ahead and navigate over to 10.0.2.4, which is the controller's IP address. First, we're going to check if you can ping it which you can and I think uh, my bad here you have to do HTTPS when you get this simply ignore it and hit advanced and proceed and now you're going to be presented with the login screen and you type in your username and password that you ent entered just previously and now you're going to be sent to the uh, this new interface that Cisco has. Very cool, very sleek interface. However, it's not where we're going to be doing most of our configuration here. Uh, over on the top right, you see the advanced tab. You hit that, and you're going to be presented with the original uh, wireless line controller interface. It's a good interface. Uh, I really like it. Um, there's a couple of things that we got to do here before we move on. The first thing is that uh, for one, I'm going to go over to WLAN and delete the that SSID that we created. Alright, so um, now that we have 
this running. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to add an access point to the environment. So stay tuned for that.